and welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. I'm Chelsea Bussemeyer. Thanks for joining me today in my workshop. Today we have a fun little project. We get to make a tutu for my little niece who just arrived last week and we're going to talk a little bit about aligning those sewing variables as well as have the tutorial today on how to make a little tutu. So if you have any little princesses in your life and you want to make a tutu for them, you'll know how to do it now. If you're crafty at all, you've probably seen the cut and tie tutus, where you cut the long strips of tulle and you just knot them around the elastic. That works great if you um, just wanna be crafty, if you wanna make it easier for a little one to help you, or uh, I've seen too people crocheting tops and knotting it on. Um, those can be really quick and easy, but I still don't like that you have all the slits in between the tulle and so like the tool can separate as well as I do find that those knots can get a little bit bulky and big. So if you like to sew, then I still uh, like a sewn tutu the best. Like any sewing project, there's 101 ways to do it. But today we're gonna walk through my favorite way and I'll describe all of the sewing variables and why I've aligned them the way I have so that you can get a better understanding how to align your sewing variables for your projects to really get the result that you want in every aspect of the technique applied as well as the end use. So here's a little sample tutu. This one is kind of a size that I would make for like a one-year-old. So it's a little bit bigger than what I'm gonna be making today. And it's a little less poofy. I'm gonna do a really, really roughly poofy, um, just puffy little miniature tutu. And maybe she'll even use it for her newborn pics or something like that. But this is a tutu that I made. I think it should be used for like a unicorn cake, uh, cake smash photo or something for a one-year-old. But here we can see just like the amount of ruffles because this is the first thing you really need to decide when creating a tutu is how much fullness and also the length of your tutu. So depending on the length of your tutu, that may uh, kind of dictate the amount of fullness that you want to have or the length of the strips you want to cut for your tutu. Now this tutu is actually just the full length of the fabric right across the bottom uh, two times. So that's like the fullness that you get from the width of the tool that I used for here. And uh, there's a couple of different general rules. So one is when you're gathering for any type of skirt or even curtains, when you want just a nice fullness of gathers, not too much, not too little, then using three times the length you wanna attach it to is a good kind of general rule for judging how much length you need for your gathers. However, in the case of a tutu, depending on how roughly and how full you want the skirt, you may need to add a little bit more. And this is due to the fact that depending on the length, if you're measuring a tiny little waist and you do three times that measurement, but you're doing, you know, maybe a floor length, maybe you wanna do a ball gown for this little girl and you wanna go all the way down to the floor, then by the time it reaches the full length, you don't have very much fullness in the hem. So here, when I open it up and lay it flat, so this tutu is folded in half, you can see that I've, I've passed kind of the full circle point. Uh, if we double this up, this would be like one and a quarter kind of, of the full circle. And the longer a skirt gets, the more fullness you need to get that full circle. So if you're looking for a tutu that can be, you know, poofy and round, but when it's opened up kind of flat, she's dancing around in it, you want to make sure that the edge still has some ruffle to it, then you know you need extra length, so a longer length than what the circumference of the full circle. So this is kind of getting back into the mathematics and um, I'm not really a math fan, but understanding the calculation for a full circle is really helpful. And if you just remember pi uh, 3.14 for uh, the circumference or dividing a circumference measurements or um, multiplying the circumference measurement of the length you want. So what we need to do here is we first need our waist measurement. So once you know your waist measurement, you can divide that because that's the circumference uh, of the waist. Divide that 
by 3.14 so that you know what uh, the radius of the waist measurement is. And then once you know that radius measurement, you can add whatever length. So for me, for this little tutu, I'm just adding a very short, short little length. So just about five inches because it'll be 10 inches in total. So it's still gonna be uh, quite a big tutu for such a little newborn, um, but it's a, the, the smallest tutu I've ever made. So whatever your length is, you can add that. And then you have your full radius and you can times that again by the 3.14 uh, so that you can see, okay, what would a full circle in the length of the tutu that I am making be? and just compare that to uh, what kind of a fullness you were thinking for the waist and decide if maybe you need to add a little bit more fullness than just the three times the circumference measurement of the waist. So sorry to start off with that technical uh, bit that can be a little dry and boring, but we get to move on now to looking at my fabrics and how I'm going to piece this tutu together and then we can get off and running into the tutorial. So here on this tutu, I'll just show it as an example. I've used a satin waistband um, to enclose the elastic. And this is because I can't handle anything that's itchy. And I'm thinking, especially for small kids, I wouldn't wanna create anything that was uncomfortable or super itchy for them to wear. So I've used a really nice smooth satin waistband to be against the skin. So that's the one, the biggest drawback really with tool is that it is a little scratchy. Um, then you need to decide how many layers you're gonna do. I've done six layers on this tutu. So two of each color, three colors in this one. And on the tutu I'm creating today, I'm actually gonna do eight layers of tulle. So it's gonna be really puffy. Eight layers of tulle, and I'm actually gonna add in two layers of chiffon, which I'm excited about because I've never done a tutu with a chiffon kind of layered in. So it's gonna be kind of a cross between a super fluffy tutu and a little bit of a skirt. And so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna start with a layer of chiffon, and I've got two colors going. I'm gonna start with the pink, then I'm gonna do the eight layers of orange tulle underneath that. And then I'm gonna do uh, the orange chiffon and then end it with the pink tulle kind of on the bottom. How I'm finishing the waistband, it will actually kind of be uh, reversible. So you can pick whatever side you want up. If you want tulle up or if you want orange up or pink up. And then for the waistband of this one, I'm actually gonna use um, chiffon as well. So I'm going to do the orange chiffon so it's contrasting uh, to the the first layer. I'm thinking the the pink chiffon should be the first layer. And what I like about using this is again it's soft. It's not as smooth as satin but it's a nice soft not scratchy fabric and it's super thin because especially on tiny little waists like this newborn um, we don't want anything a fabric that's too heavy because it won't gather up nicely and fold over uh, in such a small size. So a thinner material is really nice for a waistband if you are gonna be gathering it so that it doesn't get too bulky. Oftentimes on a smooth waistband, we'll be adding interfacing or different types of things to make it a little stiffer to give it that structure. But in this scenario, in this on this project, we wanna make sure that the waistband stays nice and soft. I also want to make sure that it can gather really freely and isn't too tight on the elastic. When you're making a waistband with elastic in it, you don't want it to be too big because then your elastic can get twisted and flipped around and just like bounce all over the place. But you also don't want it to be too tight or uh, too close fitting once you've removed the seam allowance and fed the elastic through because it will have a little bit of trouble um, bunching up especially since chiffon is a crepe material, so it has a little bit of roughness texture. It won't slide as easily on the elastic, and we want that elastic to be free inside the waistband to shrink back up after it's been stretched and not stay stretched, expanded, because it's catching and just too tight 
uh, in that casing. The other thing that I've chosen to do with my production plan and a variables that I've adjusted is with my tool, I also have cut my strips of my tool twice as long as I want them to be. So these are about five inches, like I mentioned, a little bit more. And uh, what I've done, or the reason that I've cut them uh, twice as long as I need them is that when I fold them over, I have a softer edge. Again, this isn't as uh, pokey or as sharp of an edge. And since I'm using just that thin chiffon for the waistband, I didn't want pokey edges of tulle kind of poking through and rubbing her tummy. She'll probably always have a t-shirt on uh, unless she's doing half naked baby pics, <laughs> but I still want it to be nice and soft. And this edge actually makes it easier for me to work with uh, because I have two layers already perfectly lined up. So when I'm stitching them all together, I don't have as many layers sliding around. And since tulle is uh, so sheer, it's sometimes hard to really identify where the edge of that tool actually is. And since I have it folded over and double thick, then it's a darker kind of line. So when I'm lining up all of my different layers, putting in my gathering stitch, I'll have a better idea of if my, if my edges are aligned or if they're offset. So I can keep all of my layers together without taking as many steps. So I'm going to, going to just line up all of my rows, um, all, since I have eight layers of tulle, I have four kind of double packs of tulle cut and two layers of chiffon. I'm going to layer them all on top in the order I want them and do one row of gather stitching uh, through them all to hold them all together and get them all lined up to attach to my waistband. Okay, well that was enough theory, I think. Let's head on over to my sewing machine. It's also in a new location in my studio today uh, since um, my sister and my little little baby niece moved in for the time being as they're kind of in transition for places. So um, yeah, we've just got a full, full house here. So I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Here I am, same machine, but a new location. So today, since we're making this tutu, or I'm making this tutu with the chiffon layer, I have a couple extra steps that you wouldn't normally have if you were just making a regular tulle tutu. Um, so that would be the closing the chiffon layer. So I've got the, the strip that is the, the first layer, the, the pink layer I'm gonna sew first and I'm gonna just close the seam. I'm just putting one seam in because we don't really need side seams in this scenario. Uh, if you had just smaller pieces of material to work with, you could totally cut it in two pieces and piece it together, but I had a long length of scrap, so I cut out the full length I needed and I'm gonna close this seam with a French seam. I love French seams for chiffon, for anything that frays or ravels, especially if you don't have a serger, definitely learn the French seam. And then I'm gonna roll hem the hem while it's all flat. It will be easier uh, to roll hem than by the time it's all gathered up in the tiny tutu. And I'm starting with the pink because I hate changing my thread. I don't know why I think it's a, a subconscious, just aversion from experiencing changing the threads on a serging machine. I'm just gonna blame it on uh, overlock sergers <laughs> at the moment, but I'm gonna start off with pink and do close the seam on the pink, hem it, and then transition over to the orange and I'm just spinning my bobbin while I'm sewing because the industrial machines are set up that way. You can make a bobbin and so at the same time. And then I'm gonna transfer over to the orange thread since I'm doing the orange waistband. So any type of stitching I'm doing with putting the two two together, the gather stitch, putting on the waistband, all of that, I wanna do with orange. So we'll be able to finish the project with the orange afterwards. All right, I'm gonna get started by closing this seam with the French seam. I've already closed the first seam on the, the French seam here and then pressed it over to one side, just very narrow, close it. And I like to just press my seams over to one side when I'm doing French seams and then have that side, the side with the seam allowance on the inside facing down. And then I find I can easily roll over the other side as I feed it through the machine uh, without needing to press 
the whole seam closed, but you can play around with it and see uh, how many steps is makes it the easiest for you to close French seams. And you can always press again here. I'm just gonna place it under the machine. Another thing that I like to do is trim the seam allowance, any threads, before I close it up, I'll trim the seam allowance on the inside because it can be really frustrating if any of those threads are kind of hanging down and hanging on the outside when you're done your French seam. Oh, it slid out, so we'll just pop it back under here again. Back stitch real quick. Make sure we're rolled over all the way along. And close this puppy up. Did cut. There we go. I love how clean a French seam is. It's all nice and clean on the inside. If I had long threads hanging off my raw edge, then they could possibly be hanging out on the right side here. But this looks really nice. I'm just going to give it a little pressing and then we'll get this piece hemmed. Now I've got my machine set up for the rolled hem. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I love the rolled hem. And I've got a little narrow a seam foot on here and then a rolled hem attachment. You can also get the rolled hem feet for your machine. But for this machine, I've got the actual attachment that I screw onto the plate here. And I'm just gonna start us off just past this seam. I've just got the one seam to to account for and it's sometimes a little thick to roll over the seam. So I'm gonna place it just behind where I start because when I finish the seam and I've come full circle, then I'll be taking off the attachment and just rolling the last uh, inch or so by hand anyways. So it will work out really well here. And so I'm just gonna slide it under and get it started, especially, especially for chiffon. I love this rolled hem. But yeah, like I said, if you've been following me for any length of time, you've definitely heard me um, raving about this uh, before. So here we go. It's definitely all on how you roll it over, but I did also make a rolled hem video. So if you do want to see a little bit more of the technique of how to roll or use a roll hemmer, then definitely check out that video. Now that I've approached the seam, I'm just going to remove my rolled hemmer and roll the last little bit by hand. My thread caught up a little here, so I'm just gonna trim this off. Choo, choo, choo. Make sure that my threads are good. And then I'm just gonna roll this last little bit over the seam by hand. Remove my plate. Now before I change my thread to orange, I'm just gonna open up these strips of tulle and close up the pink ones so that they're also in a circle to join all the layers together right away here. And I'm just gonna open it up and close, oh, that's the outside. I'm just gonna close it on the inside of where I've got it folded. So there will be one seam going in one way and one going in the other way once it's folded together, but the seam will be kind of sandwiched in between the layers of tulle. I'm 
there we go. Now I've got a full, full circle. Now I've got my orange layers caught up to my pink layers and I've also pressed the seam allowance on my tool. I've just opened it up, separated it and pressed it to either side, nice and flat so that it blends out more so than if the seam allowance was all laying in one direction. And the next step is layering up all of the layers and then we get to do the gather stitch. So I've decided I want to go back and forth in between the colors. So I know I wanted to start with the pink, then I'm gonna layer an orange underneath. And I'm just gonna line up all of my seam allowances here in one spot. Then I'm gonna go for a pink tool, the orange chiffon, back to the pink tool, and last but not least, finish it off with another layer of orange tool here. So I've got all my, my edges lined up, all my seam allowances lined up at this spot. And I'm gonna throw in a pin and then line up the rest all the way around. We'll just shake it out, get these layers together. Doo, doo, doo. Wish I had a zoom out function right now. So we'll get these orange, pink. Sorry, I've got a little twist. Orange, pink, orange. Maybe we'll start from the inside. Maybe this will be easier. Throw the orange inside the pink. The pink inside the orange. Get all these layers lined up. I hope this isn't too much fabric for such a little body. It always seems like such a tiny, tiny pieces when working for such tiny, tiny humans. But then once they get it on, it's like, wow, that's a lot of material. But I am going for like a super, super poofy, fluffy tutu. So I think, I'll think, I think we'll be okay. I'm just gonna line up these edges a little better and get it pinned together. Now that I've got all my layers lined up and pinned together, I'm gonna switch my machine to just a really large stitch and add the gather stitch all the way around to hold everything together. And this is a great example of what I mean when I say use pins when you need them, don't use them when you don't. I hardly ever use pins on seams except for like this scenario where I've got a lot of layers I want to hold together. So instead of running around kind of a basting stitch, pinning two or three layers together at a time, I'm just going to do all, all six layers. It kind of feels more like six layers because those four layers of tulle are folded in half. So it's just that one folded edge, um, but it is still a lot of layers to line up. So that's why I've got my pins every so often, just to help me stay on track. And we're gonna go um, just buzz around here. When I'm doing gather stitches, I like to do one right kind of on the seam allowance side of my full seam allowance so that it's not really showing by the time we add the waistband, but there's that gather stitch right close to where I'm adding the waistband so that my ruffles will be really nice and fine and even. And then I'm just gonna do a second one kind of halfway through the seam allowance. So we're gonna get started with the first row of stitching here. Chiffon is just so soft, it likes to slide back in. Come on, you can come out of there. Now 
now that I've done the first row of stitching and I've just finished a tiny bit offset, I'm kind of at my full uh, seam allowance width really on this side, but it makes it easier to gather it up if I don't stitch over top of my original stitching. I'm just gonna buzz around once more, just a little bit farther in. Doing two rows of gather stitching always makes it easier uh, to gather it up without it twisting. Once again with an offset kind of meet up with my, with my line. And now I'm going to just gather it all together so that it's the same length as my waistband. And I'm also going to prep my waistband here with a French seam closure. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do a French seam on the waistband. I'm just going to do a regular, um, just close the, the seam here and uh, press the seam allowances apart again so that it's a really soft transition where the seam allowance is when I'm running the elastic through. But sometimes that French seam can get a little bit thick since it's four layers especially if I want to feed an elastic through. Now that I've got the skirt part ruffled up to the length of the waistband casing, which of course is still way larger than the actual waistband, if you're looking at this thinking, how is that going to fit on a newborn? It definitely won't in this size, but I wanted to gather it up to the size of my waistband casing. And then the elastic inside that casing is going to pull it together the last little bit. So I'm just going to line up my seams, the seam on the waistband casing and the seam on the skirt and put in a little pin here and get this all lined up and matched up and make sure that they are the same size. And then I'm just going to stitch this waistband casing on and fold it over and stitch it again. Okay. As I stitch it on, I've just flipped it inside out so that I can stitch kind of inside the circle. Whenever you have kind of a tighter circle, whether it be a sleeve or a pants hem, or anytime you have a smaller circle, it's always easier to kind of stitch inside the circle rather than having the other layer kind of underneath what you're sewing because it protects you from by accidentally catching that second layer as you go around. So I'm just going to make sure my seams are lined up here one more time before I get started. And then we'll just stitch this waistband on. And you can see here how I can just kind of pull it around as, as I stitch. It's really easy to just roll it around with me. Chiffon frays just so quickly. All sorts of long chiffon threads hanging off of here. Now that I have the first half of the waistband stitched on and I've just folded over my seam allowance and pressed it, I'm going to stitch stitch the waistband closed and I'm going to stitch it actually I think through so that there's a little line of stitching kind of on the top and on the bottom to close it up and I'm going to leave just a little area kind of open here by the seam for uh, sliding my elastic in. I'm going to stitch it from the back side because I can be pretty confident of where I'm stitching on the front since I can see where my stitch line is here. So as long as I cover that up with my uh, waistband here and stitch on top of that, I'll be catching the top layer on the other side. So we're just going to make our way around the skirt once again. Now that I've made it all the way around except for this little opening to slide the elastic in, I'm going to take my piece of elastic which is exactly my little niece's waist circumference. I really don't want it to be too tight on her since she's just a week old. 
plus I have a little bit of seam allowance. I'm going to use the old safety pin trick to slide in my elastic and we're just going to go all the way around feeding this in. Got to make sure that I don't lose lose my little end of elastic, so I'm going to just pin it in place for now so it doesn't accidentally slip into the hole. Now that my uh, safety pin is back out, I'm just going to double check that my elastic isn't twisted anywhere. Definitely don't want to twist in my elastic at any point. And then I'm going to join up these two ends. Just stick them together, sew them together with my machine here. And we'll close up the little hole as well. Gonna do it on two spots and just back stitch the heck out of it so that it won't ever release or let go. Now that we've got that elastic stitched together, I'm just gonna feed it back in. And I'm wondering, this feels like this elastic is somewhat stretched out. I'm just gonna feed it around. I want the elastic. I'm really glad I did this casing as large as I did because it is loose on the elastic, but not too loose. But we definitely need that amount of extra space so that the elastic can retract back and isn't getting caught, stretched out. Otherwise, it would um, make the waistband too large as I just wanted it to be just just small enough that it doesn't slide down but if the elastic is stretched out it would be yeah, too big for her little waist oh, I'm just loving this orange and pink together okay I'm gonna just close up this little hole now that my elastic is in place Here we go, let's take this over to the table and have a little look, see. Here we go, what do you think? A little tutu. One thing I am finding is that the tool is somewhat weighed down by the chiffon, so it's not as fluffy as I thought, but we also do have all of the gathers from all of the layers lined up with each other since we gathered it with the same uh, gathering stitch. So one thing that I have found, if you have a skirt that you want a little bit flatter after you've gathered it, then steaming it down, pulling it together, steaming it down can really bring out some of the fullness. And in this scenario, if you have a, a little skirt that you want to be a little fluffier, then opening it up and separating the layers all the way around so that uh, the, the pleats where it's pleated together, the little gathers where it's gathered together here, um, kind of separate and get offset from each other really creates a whole lot more of fullness, especially in these tool layers. So I'm just gonna go all the way around and just pull them apart, to give it a little bit more body and poof. There we go. One layer, two layer, three layer, four. <laughs> Got a ways to go here since we have, oh wow, this is definitely fluffing up and I've only separated two of the tool layers here. So we will get lots of, lots of volume with this technique of just separating the layers so that they kind of get, get offset from each other.
So here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Ruffly, fluffy layers. Yeah. And then you really get to see kind of the, the mix of the pink and the orange. I really love these colors together. So the next thing I need to do is get a picture with little Sailor in her tutu. This is probably going to be somewhat of even a long tutu for such a for such a little baby. Flipping it around, this would be the more orange size. So it's almost like a reversible little tutu, depending on if you want more pink or more orange. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of Workshop Wednesday. I've got this tiny little tutu now, but I'm sure it's gonna look so big on her when she slips it on with all of these layers and all of this fluff. And I will definitely share a picture in my Facebook group uh, once I have a picture of Little Sailor in her tutu. And so definitely click the link in the description box if you're not already part of my uh, Facebook group. Otherwise, I look forward to sewing with you again next week on our next episode of Workshop Wednesday. Till then, take care and happy sewing.